Hey guys, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. It's good to have you back. I know it's been a while since I posted a video. My apologies. It's been pretty hectic around here. So finally, I want to start getting more videos down so that you guys can continue on your spiritual path. Uh, so in this video, we are going to be discussing um, seeing energies, um, especially uh, energies that come from the aura. Now, I'm going to be honest with you all. I don't really have a lot of experience seeing auras. In fact, um, as important as I hear it is, there were other important things that I wanted to learn above all that. So I kind of set it aside. But I'm going to teach you a technique that is uh, pretty close um, to seeing auras. And then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you an example of another way I uh, heard it is done. But um, I tried it once and I didn't find it that helpful, but maybe you guys will have a different reaction. So the first technique I want to show you that worked for me is called, at least what I call, the name game. Um, me and uh, a fellow colleague at uh, Spex Howard one night, we uh, after class, we just sat out in the parking lot talking, and she suggested that um, we do a little experiment, and uh, we envisioned the people in our class's names, like in our mind's eye, we just saw the words, and uh, we tried to see what kind of uh, colors we could see around them, and we found out, you know, it... The colors did match a lot about their personality. So that is how I discovered, hey, this is a new way of looking at things. So um, I'm going to give you a little example uh, via uh, Microsoft Paint. All right, so here we go. So we're just going to come up with any random old name. The first name that came to mind was Johnny Jacobs. So you're gonna see it in your mind just like this and you are going to look to see what colors stand out that surround the words now obviously for this example you're not going to have any reaction because at least I don't think you guys know a, a Johnny Jacobs but you're going to envision someone's name like this and see what colors resonate from them you know, and it could be all manner of colors. Like, for example, there was this guy in my class. He was like a, a kind of like a know-it-all. He knew a lot of stuff, but he really wasn't afraid to let people know that he knew it. And two prominent colors that resonated from him was yellow and uh, red, which to me symbolized a lot of pride. He had a lot of pride in himself. He he really looked up to himself. Um, so uh, they were the two prominent colors that I saw surrounding his name. And of course, um, there's other colors. Um, blue can mean um, maybe sadness, despair. Um, let's see, there's orange, which to me symbolized, you know, strength, uh, confidence. There was uh, purple, and <clears throat> there was only one woman in my class to which I saw purple, and um, from what I knew about her, she was really smart, and uh, she seemed like... Um, she was still trying to figure life out, but she was pretty confident that what she was uh, doing at Spex Howard was the right thing. So, you know, I don't really know. Um, I don't have all the colors marked because they who knows? They can mean different things for different people. As wish as I, I had like a list for the colors, I definitely knew that I felt... I felt like certain emotions that could have something to do with me being an empath, me being able to feel others' emotions, but I I could feel in uh, certain people's emotions, so that's why I relate the colors to them. 
Now, if you see shades of dark, real shades of like, almost like a dark fog over the name, that could be a sign of negativity, of uh, negative energy. You do not want to be near this person uh, so that they don't corrupt your energy. That could be a sign of <clears throat> potentially someone using drugs, um, someone who is, um, doesn't have their life together and is always, like, seeming to messing things up. Someone who could be considered a pariah. Um, you just do not want to be near these people. <clears throat> now, it's different for people who may have, like, a certain mental illness, like, uh, depression or, uh, bipolar disorder. Um... You will see different colors that resonate with that, but you will not see something like that. So there is a difference between that and someone who is um, just full of negativity. <clears throat> because um, from what I heard, depression and um, other uh, mental diseases like that... Uh, they don't always happen. Sometimes people have their up days and some people have their down days. I'm talking about people who are just really bad people. They don't really give a crap about anyone else. They could be narcissists. Um, people who think very highly of themselves and very low of everyone else. People who don't really have any shame. People who, um, they feel like the world owes them everything and they owe the world nothing. So, those kind of people is the are the type of people you would see that negative cloud around. Now, why would you utilize this ability? Um, there's a lot of people who are very closed off. People who are definitely not going to reveal a lot about themselves. Maybe people who are they're hiding something deep down, but they just don't know how to open up. If you feel like it's something serious, this could help peer into their energy so that maybe you can determine what's up and maybe get them the help they need or get them to open up about something that may be weighing them down, weighing their energy down. It could also help you uh, when um, making new friendships or new partnerships. This will tell you a lot about the person and therefore give you enough reaction time to make a decision whether you want to continue this friendship or partnership with someone, uh, whether it be in a, a regular friendship, a business partnership, uh, a romantic relationship. This will help you determine how to go about being with this person and if it's really the right thing to do. Because a lot of people change over time. Uh, people, they'll end up marrying someone who acts really, really nice. And then eventually, you know, later down the line, the marriage just turns into one big mess. So people do change. Same thing with friendships, relationships, business partnerships. You know, people can get corrupted. People can change. So this will help. And uh, if you feel like someone is going through such change, this would be a great ability to try. Just think of the person's name and see what colors you get and what feelings you get from this, uh, this name. And uh, truth be told, you it tends to work better if you know the person at least to some degree. If it's just someone you just met off the street... Um, they might be a little harder to read. You might get a, a reaction right away. You might get, you know, direct feelings and direct colors coming through when you see their name. Or sometimes you might see nothing. Um, as an empath, I tend to make connections real quickly. It's both a blessing and a curse. You know, uh, it's like when I, I click with someone and we talk like, say... Um, in line for coffee, you know, we just talk a little bit, you know, and then all of a sudden he gets his coffee and we go our separate ways. I feel like a, a, a connection has already been made. It's already been like ironclad. It feels like we've known each other for years. It's an unfortunate side effect of being an empath, but it's also one that can be used to an advantage. 
So if you're a person like me who has such abilities and connections, it may be a little easier for you to do this with someone fresh in your life than people who do not. I uh, have used this ability maybe three times in my life. I haven't really used it uh, with a lot of people because of the fact that I am an empath and I can get uh, the readings down on people almost immediately. Um, you know, if someone's angry, it, it can affect me really, you know, and I might find myself angry. Or if someone's stressed out, it will stress me out even if the person hasn't told me they're stressed. So that kind of thing. Um, I don't really feel the direct need to um, use this technique very often since I already have that ability. But if there's like a, someone I can't read that I feel like I should, I will utilize this. But lately I haven't had to. But if this technique helps you, then good. All right, so now that we got that technique discussed, we are going to discuss the other way I've heard is great for seeing auras and it's great practice. So you're gonna need two things for this. You're going to need a white background, kind of similar to this wall. Uh, it could be a painted wall, it could be a white sheet. It could be uh, a piece of white cardboard, a white bounce board. You know, it just has to be white. And it has to be able to cover around you enough. And what you're going to want to do is take a picture of yourself with a camera sitting against this white background. Now, you're going to want to do it from your chest up. And you're going to want it closer than um, the view I have right now. So you're going to want to do like a nice close-up. You're going to take a picture. Now you're going to study this picture for a while. You're going to study this picture and you might you might notice that um, there is like a an outline around you the longer you look at this picture. And um, you're going to want to focus in on this outline. See if it changes color, if it emits any color. It's going to be like radiating outwards. So you might see glimpses of different colors. That is a great way of being able to um, see your own aura and practice for um, seeing other people's auras. Another way is by studying yourself in the mirror with the same white background, but you're going to want to sit in front of like a full length mirror against a white background and you're going to want to just study yourself. Study the same outline as you're going, but you're going to want to stand still for that. And you're going to want it like bright enough. You're going to want the white background lit up enough so that you can see the outline. Um, I have never tried this. I wish I had. That way I can tell you if it works or not. But of course, everyone's different. Uh, I have very little experience about practicing auras. But these are the... Uh, to, uh, this is a way I heard is a good way for practicing auras and the uh, previous technique is one that I believe is a big help for sensing people's energies. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I want to thank you for joining me. If there's any um, questions you have, put it down in the comment below. And if you have your own uh, specific practice or um, technique for seeing auras, I want to hear about it. You know, share your um, your experiences and your opinions uh, in the comments as well. That way, not only can I learn things, but also people who uh, come across this video. Uh, that being said, may your spiritual path be one of love and light.